Electron scattering occurs when electrons are deviated from their original trajectory. This is due to the electrostatic forces within matter interaction or, if an external magnetic field is present, the electron may be deflected by the Lorentz force. This scattering typically happens with solids such as metals, semiconductors and insulators, and is a limiting factor in integrated circuits and transistors. The application of electron scattering is such that it can be used as a high-resolution microscope for hadronic systems. That allows the measurement of the distribution of charges for nucleons and nuclear structure. The scattering of electrons has allowed us to understand that protons and neutrons are made up of the smaller elementary subatomic particles called quarks. Electrons may be scattered through a solid in several ways. Not at all. No electron scattering occurs at all and the beam passes straight through. Single scattering. When an electron is scattered just once. Plural scattering. When electron scatters several times. Multiple scattering. When electrons scatter very many times over. The likelihood of an electron scattering and the proliferance of the scattering is a probability function of the specimen thickness to the mean free path. History. The principle of the electron was first theorized in the period of 1838 to 1851 by a natural philosopher by the name of Richard Laming who speculated the existence of subatomic unit-charged particles. He also pictured the atom as being an electrosphere of concentric shells of electrical particles surrounding a material core. It is generally accepted that J. J. Thomson first discovered the electron in 1897, although other notable members in the development in charged particle theory are George Johnston Stoney, Emil Wickett, Walter Kaufmann, Peter Zeeman and Hendrik Lorentz. Compton scattering was first observed at Washington University in 1923 by Arthur Compton who earned the 1927 Nobel Prize in Physics for the discovery. His graduate student Y. H. Wu who further verified the results is also of mention. Compton scattering is usually cited in reference to the interaction involving the electrons of an atom. However nuclear Compton scattering does exist. The first electron diffraction experiment was conducted in 1927 by Clinton Davison and Lester Germer using what would come to be a prototype for modern lead system. The experiment was able to demonstrate the wave-like properties of electrons, thus confirming the de Broglie hypothesis that matter particles have a wave-like nature. However, after this the interest in lead diminished in favor of high-energy electron diffraction until the early 1960s when an interest in lead was revived. Of notable mention during this period is H. E. Farnsworth who continued to develop lead techniques. High-energy electron-electron colliding beam history begins in 1956 when K. O'Neill of Princeton University became interested in high-energy collisions and introduced the idea of accelerator injecting into storage ring. While the idea of beam-beam collisions had been around since approximately the 1920s, it was not until 1953 that a German patent for colliding beam apparatus was obtained by Rolf Widerow. Phenomena Electrons can be scattered by other charged particles through the electrostatic Coulomb forces. Furthermore, if a magnetic field is present, a traveling electron will be deflected by the Lorentz force. An extremely accurate description of all electron scattering, including quantum and relativistic aspects, is given by the theory of quantum electrodynamics. Lorentz force The Lorentz force, named after Dutch physicist Hendrik Lorentz, for a charged particle Q is given by the equation, where QE describes the electric force due to a present electric field, E, acting on Q, and QVXB describes the magnetic force due to a present magnetic field, B, acting on Q when Q is moving with velocity V, which can also be written as 
where is the electric potential, and A is the magnetic vector potential. It was Oliver Heaviside who is attributed in 1885 and 1889 to first deriving the correct expression for the Lorentz force of QVXB. Hendrik Lorentz derived and refined the concept in 1892 and gave it his name, incorporating forces due to electric fields. Rewriting this as the equation of motion for a free particle of charge Q mass m, this becomes, or in the relativistic case using Lorentz contraction where gamma is. This equation of motion was first verified in 1897 in J. J. Thomson's experiment investigating cathode rays which confirmed, through bending of the rays in a magnetic field, that these rays were a stream of charged particles now known as electrons. Variations on this basic formula describe the magnetic force on a current carrying wire, the electromotive force in a wire loop moving through a magnetic field, and the force on a particle which might be traveling near the speed of light. Electrostatic Coulomb force Electrostatic Coulomb force also known as Coulomb interaction and electrostatic force named for Charles Augustin de Coulomb who published the result in 1785, describes the attraction or repulsion of particles due to their electric charge. Coulomb's law states that the magnitude of the electric force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The magnitude of the electrostatic force is proportional to the scalar multiple of the charge magnitudes and inversely proportional to the square of the distance and is given by or in vector notation where Q1, Q2 are two signed point charges, R hat being the unit vector direction of the distance R between charges, K is Coulomb's constant and epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space, given in SI units by the directions of the forces exerted by the two charges on one another are always along the straight line joining them and a vector forces of infinite range, and obey Newton's third law being of equal magnitude and opposite direction. Further, when both charges Q1 and Q2 have the same sign the forces between them are repulsive. If they are of opposite sign then the forces are attractive. These forces obey an important property called the principle of superposition of forces which states that if a third charge were introduced then the Total force acting on that charge is the vector sum of the forces that would be exerted by the other charges individually. This holds for any number of charges. However, Coulomb's law has been stated for charges in a vacuum. If the space between point charges contains matter then the permittivity of the matter between the charges must be accounted for as follows where epsilon r is the relative permittivity or dielectric constant of the space the force acts through, and is dimensionless. Collisions If two particles interact with one another in a collision process there are four results possible after the interaction. Elastic Elastic scattering is when the collisions between targets and incident particles have total conservation of kinetic energy. This implies that there is no breaking up of the particles or energy lost through vibrations. That is to say that the internal states of each of the particles remains unchanged. Due to the fact that there is no breaking present, elastic collisions can be modeled as occurring between point-like particles. A principle that is very useful for an elementary particle such as the electron. Inelastic inelastic scattering is when the collisions do not conserve kinetic energy, and as such the internal states of one or both of the particles has changed. This is due to energy being converted into vibrations which can be interpreted as heat waves or vibrations between constituent particles of either collision party. Particles may also split apart. Further energy can be converted into breaking the chemical bonds between components. Furthermore, momentum is conserved in both elastic and inelastic scattering. 
Types of scattering Compton scattering Compton scattering, so named for Arthur Compton who first observed the effect in 1922 and which earned him the 1927 Nobel Prize in Physics, is the inelastic scattering of a high-energy photon by a free-charged particle. This was demonstrated in 1923 by firing radiation of a given wavelength sent through a foil was scattered in a manner inconsistent with classical radiation theory published a paper in the Physical Review explaining the phenomenon, a quantum theory of the scattering of X-rays by light elements. The Compton effect can be understood as high-energy photons scattering inelastically off individual electrons. When the incoming photon gives part of its energy to the electron, then the scattered photon has lower energy and lower frequency and longer wavelength according to the Planck relation, which gives the energy E of the photon in terms of frequency f or nu and Planck's constant h. The wavelength change in such scattering depends only upon the angle of scattering for a given target particle. This was an important discovery during the 1920s when the particle nature of light suggested by the photoelectric effect was still being debated. The Compton experiment gave clear and independent evidence of particle-like behavior. The formula describing the Compton shift in the wavelength due to scattering is given by, where lambda f is the final wavelength of the photon after scattering, lambda i is the initial wavelength of the photon before scattering, h is Planck's constant, μ is the rest mass of the electron, c is the speed of light and theta is the scattering angle of the photon. The coefficient of is known as the Compton wavelength, but is in fact a proportionality constant for the wavelength shift. The collision causes the photon wavelength to increase by somewhere between zero and twice the Compton wavelength. Thomson scattering is the classical elastic quantitative interpretation of the scattering process, and this can be seen to happen with lower, mid-energy, photons. The classical theory of an electromagnetic wave scattered by charged particles cannot explain low-intensity shifts in wavelength. Inverse Compton scattering takes place when the electron is moving and has sufficient kinetic energy compared to the photon. In this case net energy may be transferred from the electron to the photon. The inverse Compton effect is seen in astrophysics when a low-energy photon bounces off a high-energy electron. Such electrons are produced in supernovae and active galactic nuclei. Moller scattering Mott scattering Barber scattering Brems Tralung scattering Deep inelastic scattering Synchrotron emission If a charged particle, such as an electron, is accelerated, this can be acceleration in a straight line or motion in a curved path. Electromagnetic radiation is emitted by the particle within electron storage rings and circular particle acceleration is known as synchrotrons. Electrons are bent in a circular path and emit X-rays typically. This radially emitted, and gamma is the Lorentz factor, radiated power then becomes for highly relativistic particles, such that velocity becomes nearly constant, the gamma-4 term becomes the dominant variable in determining loss rate, which means that the loss scales as the fourth power of the particle energy gamma-mc2, and the inverse dependence of synchrotron radiation loss on radius, argues for building the accelerator as large as possible. Facilities SLAC Stanford Linear Accelerator Center is located near Stanford University, California. Construction began on the two-mile-long linear accelerator in 1962 and was completed in 1967, and in 1968 the first experimental evidence of quarks was discovered resulting in the 1990 Nobel Prize in Physics. Shared by SLAC's Richard Taylor and Jerome I. Friedman and Henry Kendall of MIT, the accelerator came with a 20 GeV capacity for the electron acceleration, and while similar to Rutherford's scattering experiment, that experiment operated with alpha particles at only 7 MeV. 
In the SLAC case the incident particle was an electron and the target a proton, and due to the short wavelength of the electron it was able to probe into the proton. The Stanford positron electron asymmetric ring addition to the SLAC made further such discoveries possible, leading to the discovery in 1974 of the J psi particle, which consists of a paired charm quark and anti charm quark, and another Nobel Prize in Physics in 1976. This was followed up with Martin Pearl's announcement of the discovery of the tau lepton, for which he shared the 1995 Nobel Prize in Physics. The SLAC aims to be a premier accelerator laboratory to pursue strategic programs in particle physics, particle astrophysics and cosmology as well as the applications in discovering new drugs for healing, new materials for electronics and new ways to produce clean energy and clean up the environment. Under the directorship of Kai Chang Kao, the SLAC's fifth director, a noted X-ray scientist who came to SLAC in 2010 to serve as associate laboratory director for the Stanford Synchrotron Radiation Light Source. Barbar SSRL, Stanford Synchrotron Radiation Light Source Other scientific programs run at SLAC include Advanced Accelerator Research Atlas, Large Hadron Collider Elementary Particle Theory EXO, Enriched Xenon Observatory FACET, Facility for Advanced Accelerator Experimental Tests Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope GEANT4 KIPAC, Kavli Institute for Particle Astrophysics and Cosmology, LCLS, LINAC Coherent Light Source, LSST, Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, NLCTA, Next Linear Collider Test Accelerator, Stanford Pulse Institute, SIMES, Stanford Institute for Materials and Energy Sciences. SUNCAT Center for Interface Science and Catalysis, Super CDMS, Super Cryogenic Dark Matter Search. Having grown rapidly in size and scope, it is today renowned for high-quality research in a diverse range of scientific disciplines, and encompasses a network of world-class research centers and institutes across Japan. The RIKEN Rebeam Factory, otherwise known as the RIKEN Nishina Center, is a cyclotron-based research facility which began operating in 2007, 70 years after the first in Japanese cyclotron from Dr. Yoshio Nishina whose name is given to the facility. As of 2006, the facility has a world-class heavy ion accelerator complex. This consists of a K540 MeV ring cyclotron and two different injectors, a variable frequency heavy ion LINAC and a K70 MeV AVF cyclotron. It has a projectile fragment separator which provides rebeams of less than 60 atomic mass units, the world's most intense light atomic mass rebeams. Overseen by the Nishina Center, the Rebeam factory is utilized by users worldwide promoting research in nuclear, particle and hadron physics. This promotion of accelerator applications research is an important mission of the Nishina Center, and implements the use of both domestic and overseas accelerator facilities. SCRIT The SCRIT facility is currently under construction at the RIKEN Rebeam factory in Japan. The project aims to investigate short-lived nuclei through the use of an elastic electron scattering test to charge density distribution, with initial testing done with stable nuclei, with the first electron scattering off unstable SN isotopes to take place in 2014. The investigation of short-lived radioactive nuclei by means of electron scattering has never been performed because of an inability to make these nuclei a target. Now with the advent of a novel self-confining re-technique of the world's first facility dedicated to the study of the structure of short-lived nuclei, by electron scattering this research becomes possible. The principle of the technique is based around the ion trapping phenomenon which is observed at electron storage ring facilities, which has an adverse effect on the performance of electron storage rings. 
The novel idea to be employed at SCRIT is to use the ion trapping to allow short-lived RIs to be made a target, as trapped ions on the electron beam, for the scattering experiments. This idea was first given a proof-of-principle study using the electron storage ring of Kyoto University. KSR. This was done using a stable nucleus of 133 Cs as a target in an experiment of 120 MeV electron beam energy, 75 milliamperes typical stored beam current and a 100 seconds beam lifetime. The results of this study were favorable with elastically scattered electrons from the trapped Cs being clearly visible.